solutions. So I'm looking at the problem 17.16, one of the ones you have to do for homework, um, where you're told you have PBNO32, which is aqueous, and you also have Na2SO4, which is aqueous. And what you want to figure out is um, what's going to happen. So the first step would be to look at the two solutions. And we have two aqueous solutions. We're going to make one product that is a precipitate or a solid, and then one product will stay in solution. So I predict the two products. I look at my two com ionic compounds, and I do the crisscross method, remember that, to bond the cations and anions together. So I get P. B, SO4, SO4 has a two minus charge. PV I can tell from here to two plus charge. So I have no overall net um, subscripts I have to put in. Plus Na, NO3. And again, I crisscrossed sodium plus with NO3 minus. Now I remember from my solubility guidelines that NO3 is a nitrate. Nitrates are always soluble. So this will definitely stay aqueous. PBSO4 could form a solid. So the next step is to determine whether PBSO4 um, will be a solid in solution or if it will be, um, you know, still soluble in solution. So what we want to do is we want to look at PBSO4 and we want to come up with an expression. So we take PBSO4. and we set it to equilibrium. It can form two ions, PB2 plus, plus SO4 two minus. If I were to write a KSP expression, I would write KSP equals PB2 plus, SO4 two minus. Now, since I have no coefficients, I don't have to square anything, I don't have to cube anything, that's all good. So the next step would be to figure out my concentration of PB and SO4 into solution. So what I wanna do is look at my lead, which was added, which was from the PBNO3. So I take a look at the lead nitrate, I had 0.1 liters times eight times 10 to the negative three molar and that was equal to eight times 10 to the negative four moles of PV ions. I also wanna look at my um, sulfate, which would be my other ion added. So I look at the source of the sulfate, which was the sodium sulfate. I had 0 0.40 liters. I multiply by the molarity five times 10 to the negative three molar and I just have one sulfate in Na2SO4. I don't have like SO42 or SO43, so I can leave it. I don't have to multiply by anything. And I get two times 10 to the negative three moles of SO42 minus. So what's my next step? My next step is going to be to put this into molarity. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing out, but basically you would take your moles of these two ions and divide by your total volume. Now, if we look at our total volume, 0.1 liters plus 0.4 liters is 0.5 liters. And that's gonna give me some concentration of lead that I can plug in here. I need to do the same thing for the sulfate. So I divide by 0.5, and that's gonna give me some concentration of sulfate ions that I can plug in. The last step would be to look at the K value I get when I plug these concentrations in and compare it to K, um, to Q. Remember, if Q is bigger than K, that means that I have more product than I need. So the reaction shifts to the left. If the reaction is shifted to the left, I have a precipitate. If Q is less than K, that means I don't have enough product made. So the reaction's going to shift right. If I shift right, that means I have aqueous solution. I don't have a precipitate. 
Um, so we'll go over this, but it's just kind of an overview to get you started in how to solve one of these problems.